Soda water for me is like the bare minimum. I request that. It didn't always happen. As long as there's water. <laughs> Fred there. showing up. We better have his soda water. <laughs> and <laughs> only green m and <laughs> <laughs> This is episode 304 of Bourbon Pursuit, the podcast featuring news, reviews, and interviews with people making the bourbon whiskey industry happen. I'm one of your hosts, Kenny Coleman, and before we start today's episode, talking about single barrel experiences, here's your weekly bourbon news update. The Kentucky Distillers Association has announced that this year's Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame induction and ceremony has been unfortunately canceled. It is the highest honor given by the signature industry and is presented annually during the Kentucky Bourbon Festival in Bardstown in September. But we're all set for this to come back in 2022. Walmart's attempt at challenging Texas's liquor laws has come to an end. Walmart had been challenging the laws to sell liquor in its stores, but Texas law says publicly traded companies cannot hold a liquor license. And it went all the way to the Supreme Court, but it was denied a hearing. And it went back down to the Fifth Circuit Court, where Walmart ended up dismissing the case and the Texas law will remain standing. The Brindiamo Group, who was featured back on episode number 182, has hired Dixon Dedman to be a consulting resource for their clients for anyone needing assistance from the former Kentucky Owl Master Blender. And the bourbon counterfeit scandal is now going mainstream. Inside Edition recently ran a story with counterfeit hunter and all-around whiskey humanitarian Adam Hers, as he enlightened people into the world of counterfeit bourbon. The story even goes as far as buying a bottle of E.H. Taylor Four Grain from Acker, which is the oldest wine store in Manhattan, and it was sent off to Buffalo Trace for analysis. And, well, what did they discover? It was actually a counterfeit bottle. So, this is just another friendly PSA to smash your bottles and never resell them because they will be used for making counterfeit ones, especially Pappy Van Winkle. Now moving on to bourbon release news. Costco has partnered with Barton 1792 to develop three Kirkland Signature Kentucky bourbons. They'll be part of a rotational program starting in June. There's a Kirkland Signature small batch at 92 proof, the Kirkland Signature bottle and bond at 100, and the Kirkland Signature single barrel at 120 proof. No prices or availability have been given yet. Wonderland Distilling out of Michigan is releasing its limited edition cash strength whiskey on May 1st. Wonderland's whiskeys are blended using the traditional Canadian method, with each grain of corn, wheat, and rye all being distilled on its own and then blended later. The whiskey is bottled at full cash strength, ranging from 117 to 123 proof, and less than 150 bottles from each batch will be released. The Evan Williams Bourbon Experience, located in downtown Louisville, Kentucky, is releasing its first bourbon. The tourist facility is also a functioning distillery that produces one barrel a day using traditional copper pot still methods, and that began back in 2013. The event is celebrated with a commemorative barrel rolling down Main Street, from 4th and Main to the Evan Williams Bourbon Experience doors, and each representative will roll a barrel towards the original plot of land where Evan Williams, Kentucky's first distiller, first made bourbon on traditional pot stills next to the Ohio River. A. Smith Bowman Distillery is announcing its latest release in its experimental collection, Cane and Coffee. A blend of blackstrap molasses and evaporated cane juice was co-fermented with a custom selection of roasted coffee, and then additional coffee beans were added to the botanical basket of the still and the coffee bean essences were vapor extracted into the recovered spirit. The spirit is then left to rest in used bourbon barrels, and bottles will be packaged in 375 mLs at 90 proof for $30 starting on May 1st. One of the biggest crazes right now is the single barrel, that special barrel that was chosen from a select few and shared with a bunch of people, and most likely with a sticker on it. And as Ryan so eloquently puts it, it's the perfect product. It's a consumable, it's one of a kind, and there will never be a repeat. Myself, Ryan, and Fred, we've done our fair share of single barrel selections, probably doing over 250 barrels together or combined, and probably tasting over a thousand at different distilleries. So I think we might have seen it all. But in this episode, we talk about what we prefer when we go on a private barrel selection experience. And speaking of single barrels, don't forget that we have our own private barrel club where we select over 40 different barrels every year. 
just go to bourbonpursuit.com and click on the Private Barrel Club link. With that, enjoy today's episode. And now here's Fred Minnick with Above the Char. I'm Fred Minnick, and this is Above the Char. This week's idea comes from Jeremy Mills, who writes me on fredminnick.com. If you only have one or two pours per day and night, how do you choose which to enjoy? Is it based on your dinner, a show you're watching, or some other criteria? I've noticed that as my collection grows, I have a harder time deciding what to drink each night. It's a good problem to have, I guess. Well, Jeremy, that is a great question, and I wish I had the answer for you. But I'll tell you this right now. I don't believe in good problems. You know, there's that old saying, like, it's a good problem to have. A problem is a problem. So that being said, how do I choose uh, what to drink? You know, it really does come down to a mood. Am I craving like a cornbread? No, do I want something savory? If so, I'm reaching into that Jim Beam stash, whether it's a, a, a Black Label or a Knob Creek or a Booker's. Uh, or maybe an old granddad, which have all have really prominent, beautiful cornbread notes that I love with a little bit of drizzle of honey. Uh, or maybe I'm in the mood for something spicy. You know, that's when I'm opening up that Four Roses cabinet and I'm going straight to like either a limited edition small batch or one of those private barrel picks that I just love so much. And sometimes, of course, I'm in the mood for smoke and that'll dip my toe into the Scotch arena. Or sometimes I'll go uh, with something that's a little herbal and has some smokiness to it, like an MGP rye, which is really commonly known to have a deal note, but I find that it also has a little bit of smoke there. Um, but when it comes down to, like, I'm in the, in the mood for something funky, I will go down the path of wild turkey or go over to rum. I happen to love me a lot of rum. Well, probably why I wrote a book on it, so I could drink a lot more rum. But there's no rhyme or reason that gets me in a mood to taste something. I just happen to be in the mood for it. But that's the thing about cataloging all the things I've tasted in my career is that I know which one belongs in my palate in that particular moment. And sometimes I'm wrong and I just pour the glass out and I try again. You know what? That's a good thing to do. Always try again. Never give up. And that's this week's Above the Char. Thank you so much to Jeremy for reaching out on fredminnick.com. If you'd like to send me an Above the Char idea, make sure you're doing the same. Hit me up on fredminnick.com. That's fredminnick.com. Until next week, cheers. From their bar to yours, Chad and Sarah of the popular YouTube channel It's Bourbon Night bring you their favorite at-home old-fashioned mix with the new Elemental Elixir's Golden Hour Syrup. It's a custom-made syrup with notes of bold black tea warm spices, and orange zest. All you need is your favorite whiskey and ice. No bitters needed. One bottle makes 16 drinks, so that's only $1 cocktail before you add your own whiskey. They can also be enjoyed in other cocktails or spirits, mocktails, coffee, tea, and anything you can think of. It's crafted locally in Lexington, Kentucky, and you can get your bottle now at whiskeyambitions.com. Do you ever pour yourself a bourbon, swirl it around, and then start struggling to come up with tasting notes? And perhaps you're also looking for a good Father's Day gift idea. Well, you can now solve both with a kit from Nose Your Bourbon. And unlike other nosing kits on the market, Nose Your Bourbon kits feature real ingredients for the most authentic aromas. You can smell real Tahitian vanilla bean instead of some synthetic aroma that's just made from chemicals. So head on over to NoseYourBourbon.com and enter code BP10 for 10% off your order. Play Whiskey Wednesday Round 11, The Memory Game. Until June 26, each week you can win one of our 12 incredible grand prizes. Select two doors at checkout. And if they match on drawing night, you'll win that bottle. Not a match? No worries. You still score a Weller 12-year. Every $5 ticket gives you five chances to win, including four weekly bonus prizes. Get your tickets now at give270.org. Charitable Gaming License ORG 0002703. Always find what you love at Total Wine & More. With so many great bottles to choose from at the lowest price, it's easy to find your favorite Cabernet or a new single-barrel bourbon to try with some help from one of their friendly guides. And with every bottle comes the confidence of knowing you just found something amazing. With the lowest prices for over 30 years, find what you love and love what you find only at Total Wine & More. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. 
Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia North Carolina. Drink responsibly and be 21. Ed Bly and Rising Tide Spirits are back again with a new release of Old Stubborn Bourbon. And this release of Old Stubborn is a premium hand marriage of 10, 11, and 12-year cask drink, barely filtered pot still bourbon. It comes in at a staggering 123.8 proof. And the flavoring grain for this one, which the last one was weeded, but this time it's now rye. Rich, sweet, and bold with a long finish that's sure to be another eye-opener. You can order online at Sealbox or TheBourbonConcierge.com, and you can even purchase in person at Revival Vintage Spirits, and even now with very few select stores in Kentucky. You can get it now while you can, but be sure to do it because it's not going to last long. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Bourbon Pursuit, the official podcast of bourbon. Today, we have something that's very exciting because the whole team is together, and we are talking about something that has been... Ryan and I have gotten really entrenched with it in the past few years of doing private barrel selection. Fred has a long history of doing private barrel selections, and we're going to kind of look at what distilleries are doing right, what they could be improving, and really what we see as kind of the, the creme de la creme of, of what we really like to see when we go and we select barrels. And the greatest thing is that there's a lot of whiskey out there. There's a lot of barrels to select and there's no wrong way to do it. But I tell you what, there's are definitely ways that we prefer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's very true. And it's we, fascinating to see how it's evolved for me and like seeing like the people who are coming in to pick barrels because that is, I think we can all, all say that that is the the kid walking into the candy store moment for everybody when it's their first time and you're getting to pick a barrel. It doesn't matter oh. where you are because you don't you don't know any difference, you know. And it's like, wow, this is so cool. It is, and it's still like, I mean, Kenny and I have probably done over a hundred, and each time I'm like, I get to go pick a barrel today. It's like, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Like, there's nothing better than going in a Rick House or even if you're not in a Rick House, just going to the tasting room, but being with people that are mm -hmm. in this, you know, they're entrenched in this hobby just as much as you are. And it's like, you're not just sitting there with your friends that they're your friends, but you're like, you can't talk to them about how you're geeking out over this bourbon. Cause they're like, Oh, Ryan's talking about bourbon again. He's annoying. You know, it's, it's just a whole experience where you can like dive deep and just, it's like what you just, I never forget any of them. And then they're, they're so great. So it's going to be hard for me to pick apart, you know, some, but there are ways to do it. And, like you've read, you know, it's evolved so much, you know, it, they used to beg people to come pick barrels right. and they'd be like, come here, do whatever you want, you know, just get these things out of here. We got to move them. And now it's just become very systemized and very allocated and which we understand because with popular bourbon, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so I want to, I want to take you back to, I, I want to say this was between 2008, 2009, somewhere in that time frame, and four roses had, uh, started to uh do this and they they had a they had some media come out and like you know pick you know pick a barrel and one of the writers was jeff kleinman he, he used to run a site called uh drinkspirits.com he he got out of the industry but you know he and i were kind of like we're writing for a lot of the same people and it was just it was it was a lot of fun we were we were there and we were getting to go through uh you know they were Jim Rutledge just opened the door of everything. He opens up the sample door. And by the way, there was like bullet samples <laughs> in that little room right there. And and it was like, you know, they had like 20 to 30 barrels just all out in this room. This is before they built their special uh, like barrel spot. There's 20 to, you know, uh, 30 barrels. And we all had a whiskey thief. We're going around and, you know, drawing our own. And we were just like tasting, tasting, tasting. And so I was part of the very first like Four Roses barrel pick. I was a part of the first like uh, Knob Creek one. It was in the middle of the uh, middle of the snow. And those and just like seeing like how those two brands have like evolved is absolutely amazing. And I think, and I've done a lot of Four Roses picks, and I've seen it change over the years. And used to be able to get something that was like 14, 15 years old, and they would have twenty barrels out. You know, now you get six ain't nothing over nine years old <laughs> you know so it's a lot of the evolution has been the the decrease of whiskey age and in some respects quality we've also seen like this growth of like new brands like 
I picked a, a barrel of Catoctin Creek, um, you know, for uh, Bourbon and Beyond. One of my favorite rides I have ever picked. And it was you know, like a small, tiny brand. It was absolutely complicated, fantastic. You have all of these new brands kind of coming online. Kenny, how many how many distilleries do you think offer barrel picks right now? Because you you probably have a spreadsheet. We could name forty last year. Oh well, yeah, well, it wasn't forty. I know we did but... we did forty barrels last year, but we probably did it amongst eighteen to twenty two different distilleries. So I think that anybody that has barrels in inventory is willing to sell you a single mm-hmm. barrel. I mean, that's probably what it what it boils down to. Now I don't know, and don't get me wrong, we we actually we we turn down barrel picks too because it's either from you know, NDPs that are, um, you know, they've got very high price points and we just don't want to pay for it or something like Mm -hmm. that. Um, We've turned down plenty that it's been from distilleries and we just didn't think it was ready at the time. So there's, there's a lot of different ones out there. I mean, I'm going to say there's got to be at least over hundred to 150 different barrel programs that are out there just in bourbon. Yeah. Just a guess. Just a guess. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a, you know, 10 years ago when you had a barrel pick, and I, I think I talked about this. It was like when I was getting burned out on, it wasn't 10 years ago, maybe five, six, I was getting burnt down on limit releases and I was like, barrel picks are the new unicorns. You know, like those are the limit releases. It's something unique to anyone and everyone. Um, but there's still a lot of great whiskey and there's going to be a ton more whiskey coming out, you know, in the f- years to come. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all for single barrels. Hurry up and wait. I'm not even sure what I just said there. <laughs> I, you know, I think I, I feel the same way. I don't know what I said either. It was like I had this whole thing I was going to talk about, like the four roses barrel pick, and whatever came out of my mouth was not what I was thinking. But I just blacked out what happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's part. I mean, listen, that's part of you know drinking straight from the barrel. It's going to happen from time to time. <laughs> so I do want to kind of talk about some of the the different barrel programs that are out there and kind of like the, what we prefer now. Let's let's take COVID out of the picture because I think that's an unfair advantage for a lot of distilleries that have to have to move to 100% online sort of experiences or you know shipping you 100 ml samples in a box and then that's what you have to choose from. Now, don't be wrong. However, I, I think they've done a really good job at it, and not always on a barrel pick will you get a master distiller one on one to join you on that. Whereas a lot of times we've done these, they've joined us virtually, and you get a you know, an hour, hour and a half to like pick their brain and listen to them talk about their product, how they, what they do. And so I kind of think that's good. And you don't have to drive it to and from it's true. the distillery, worry about transportation and whatnot. But I do miss the in-person because it, there is no, you know, you're in the warehouse, you're sensory overload, you're so excited, you're with people you like. So I, I will be excited, go back into the warehouse. There are some, there's some that you just can't replicate. Right, exactly. Right. I mean, let's, let's just take wild turkey, for example. Yeah. Like that is... That is an experience that I think a lot of people do not deliver when it comes to a private barrel program with inside of, of bourbon and whiskey in general. You get to go there. I mean, God love Eddie, but sometimes you're like, what does he do all day? Like he's there. He's just in the warehouse all day with like two with two barrel pillocks. He's got one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and he's just sitting there. He's like, hey, come on in. Let's start thieving barrels until you find one. And literally there's there's no end to it versus... The other side of it, when, you know, you've got somebody that is your, uh, you know, your designated sort of, maybe they're not even a barrel select manager, like that's because mm-hmm. usually those people are working at a desk somewhere, but they're just either somebody that is uh, just a full-time employee. They just help, you know, chaperone groups through this yeah, and they're like, it. and they facilitate it. And, you know, you've got your three barrels there to select from. Yeah. I like the ladder with the, the Russells, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean it, you know, each distiller has their own, but like. There, there is something about going and tasting through, you know, 10 or 12 different ones, trying them all. But at the same time, too, it makes it harder to decide, you know, because you're like, well, gosh, I mean, there's there's four of them I like and this and then and you start to get palate fatigue. And then you're like, well, am I really picking the best one? You know, it's like, or am I just excited because I'm in the warehouse with Eddie and all my buddies? And yeah, it's uh, whereas you know, when you kind of get limited to like four or five, you can really like study them and like Mm -hmm. break them down and be like, all right, this is the one I really like. Um, Because I've been on those ones, you know, in the Russells or the Willets or whatever, and you're, it's magical because you're tasting through a ton, you're in the warehouse, but you also get fatigued and you're like, maybe I don't know if I picked the best one. Well, I think too, like, ah, this doesn't really happen much anymore, but, you know, there was a time when you would go, you know, on a pick and then, you know, the distiller would bring a drill with them 
and you would go into the. Uh, I think there's only one distillery left that does do that. Just, yeah, and you would just go That's and be will it so. pick it right there, then and there, like that, and and it that the the that aspect is like I want to see more of that. I want to see more of the like taking you into the home of the barrel. I I understand why they have the barrels uh, pulled aside and brought out to you. But when I'm told that, oh yeah, we got another group coming at uh, five and the b- two barrels that you uh, don't pick, you know, they're going to have it. We're going to roll another one in here. I mean, that just, that takes so much away of it. And, you know, the the beauty, the romance of this entire situation of picking a barrel has to do with the warehouse. And when you are not actually involved with genuinely picking the barrel, you know, if there's just three barrels or five barrels there for you to taste and pick, you know, uh, to me that takes away from, you know, the intention of what a barrel pick is. And the reason why the distillers do that is because they can move more people in. They can move more product. They can get more people involved. And most people are very happy. And I'm not going to name any names, but I, I I do think that a lot of the distillers have been resting on their laurels when it comes to having a good bourbon barrel picking experience. And I know because it used to be it used to be wonderful. And some of that may just be more people getting involved, but I think that they can still take people into the warehouse and drill into the barrel and have that kind of experience. Maybe they don't drill in all of them. Maybe they don't maybe they just have a barrel that they just freaking have 72 holes in it and it, that, <laughs> that's that the reject yeah i was like that oh. barrel's job is to be clean dry up in this warehouse. well or you can marry the two you know like old foe does they have uh three or four sitting up there but they let you drill into them which kind of brings that is it true and yeah I, which i enjoyed about because what that, a cool tasting spot too yeah old forester you're 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 up in the rafters you're not yeah. down on the floor you know people are walking by that that's a very they've done a great job with that but there, there is nothing ma- more magical than walking through each trick and having Drew Colesvin look through a spreadsheet on his phone, like, and then you go drill into one, then you taste it, and he's like, "Well, if you don't like that one, let's go over here." I might. Yeah. What do you like about this one, or what do you don't like about? It? And then you're just going to find what you like, and it would be magical if you could do that at Buffalo Trace, or now, you know, the, or the, the humbling other, thing the, is when you can't fit through the. You, you 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 know the only the skinny people can go through <laughs> there, you know. So Kenny's all like, "Yeah, I'll go over here." <laughs> You know, me oh, like Spider, like Spider Man like, through there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the other thing is, I remember being with Drew sometime and going like, "Oh yeah, we'll take this one." He goes to the spreadsheet. He goes, "Oh shit, sorry, uh, that one's already picked. Let's got to go to the next one." <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, man. Cut Let's four rows down. Ah, it's okay though. I guess I'll, I'll throw the question out to you all. I mean, you know, we talk about like the drill as being like something that's very cool and different, but if everybody did it, would it still be cool? Well, there's still ways to make it cool. Like Jack Daniels has a, a drill from the early 1900s that I witnessed uh, someone break off into the barrel. We talked about that with Jim Cantor. <laughs> yeah, it was Jim Cantor. It was so <laughs> funny. But like, uh, you know, there there are ways to to still make that cool. But, and, and you know, if everybody does it, then, you know, I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean, the drill gives you the ability to be like, all right, distillers, you don't have to unload these barrels and roll them out on the floor, which is very labor intensive. It's true. And so... But I guess it might be more labor intensive of the backside because of like, well, we actually have to get that one down. <laughs> we got to move all these other ones. So if that uh, one does get picked, you mean? Right. Yeah. Um, but most of them would be on the end. So that's not a valid argument. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think drilling's the coolest and the best, but there is something cool too about thieving out of barrel and dr- without yeah. drilling that you don't get the thief. And so I, I think, I think, Kenny, my point is, is that, you know, everyone's kind of fallen into the same pattern of having, a lot set aside for barrel picks and and not trying to make the experience special they they just have the barrels there and they rotate them out and if you don't pick one of those barrels yeah. uh someone else is going to pick it here's what i think i would like to see so like say for example they'd only you know they only want you to do taste out of three or four barrels what would be cool is if they had you know through the row of the warehouse say they had 40 or 50 and they're like, all right, you can go pick three, but you can only pick three to drill into or to or to thieve out of. I think that would be so much better yeah. than just like, here's three, 
next group's getting your two rejects, you know, and vice versa. Well, that because then you could actually look and see where the drill holes are. And you'd be like, oh, that one's been passed on like well, five times. We're not going to do that. I one. guess that's when you would do the thief. On those, well, but but not necessarily. I mean, you can actually take the, uh, you know, what are the, what are they called? The little wooden pines. Yeah. yeah those the, things. And you can just kind of like, e- yeah, you can just kind of ease it out a little bit and you can just pull some out and just kind of like push it back in. So yeah. you wouldn't necessarily have to drill it back in unless you really hammered that sucker back in there. But yeah. I mean, I think what we as whiskey geeks is like, we want choice. We just don't want the same. We don't want the two rejects with one new one, you know, in it. Um, we want something unique. And, you know, that's what's cool about, you know, like Four Roses or even like Maker's Mark is like, you truly are getting a unique. It's not just like three same Buffalo Trace barrels. It's or Knob Creek or whatever, or Ophos. It's, you know, you're getting each recipe with four roses with Maker's Mark. You're actually creating your own blend or you know finish staves. Um, and so the the more unique experience, I think, is the better for for us. Fans. I I absolutely agree. And Maker's Mark did a great job of creating an experience. But you know, when you when you do that experience with a retailer and you talk to them, they're like, it doesn't move like I want it to. You can't. They well, can't get money. It bottles. doesn't. Yeah. And so there's a lot of bottles in it, and you are you are right, Fed. Because it, oddly enough, those those Maker's Mark selections, they're really good, but they're also pretty expensive. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of bottles and they're a dime a dozen and, and I, everybody's got one. And I don't think, I, I, I think they're the, the Maker's Mark one, I think it, it probably, if it's not the best one to do as a club, it's up there. But if you are a retailer, you know, it is hard to tell that story, um, you know, to the consumer unless the consumer knows it. And when the yeah, consumer, part of it, when the consumers know it. By the way, you know, the, the mocha stave is no longer around, you know, when this, it, it's gone. And it's like, so like when I see the mocha stave now, I'm like buying it. Like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you know, got the shakes for it, but it's. Found, it's, your, found your little score for the day. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it is, it is, it, it, it's funny because if you pick with retailers, and I think that the, the group you pick with, well, it has a big impact on your experience. Like when I'm picking when I was picking barrels for bourbon and beyond, it was like, what will move at the festival? What will move at Kroger? Right. And, you know, I brought up Catoctin Creek. That was not a mover, but that was one of the one of the whiskeys I was most excited about because it was so unique and it was the kind of whiskey that you get excited, like, oh my God, this is it. But it is, it is not, it was not the same, did not have the same consumer appreciation as say the Blanton's pick hat <laughs> right <laughs> well yeah. go figure How, that's weird yeah so ryan you did bring up a good point about you know if you could go and you know select three barrels out of the 40 to go and choose from i mean that's kind of like what you do at wild turkey already right I mean, he's got 40 or 50 barrels lined out there and he's like which ones do you want to go hit right and you kind of get to do that now the other kind of thing and i'll and play you'll, you'll go there he'll, you'll taste through one or two and he's like well if y'all like this or don't like that I got something over there that you're probably going to like, you know, and so he can navigate his way through to where you get something truly unique. It's not just, here's your three barrels, better pick one or die. <laughs> <laughs> Cake or death. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the other thing is I'll play a little bit of devil's advocate for the distillery is, you know, they, this is, this is a program, like there's a lot of paperwork behind it and they go through and they taste everything to make sure it fits the profile. That's true. And so- they they want to make it easier for them to say okay you choose one these t- and that's i think god we talked about it a long time ago on on a podcast and we said you know your barrel pick is probably somebody else's reject yeah i mean oh, that's yeah. probably just the that's, that's 100% the, that's the nature of what it is and because they don't want to churn them out and bring new ones out every single time so that's essentially what's always going to happen yeah and you go into that knowing that it still doesn't take away from it cuz it's still <laughs> a lot of fun but it would be you know, I would like to be able to choose, even if it was the reject, you know, I could still choose it versus just being rolled out, you know, for me. And you have to choose or, you know what I'm trying to say, but. um, Well, I'll give you another question. So when you go through all this, I think we would love to say that we'd want to be able to taste through un- unlimited barrels. Like, look, just let us have, you know, carte blanche and free reign to everything. But what's a realistic number of barrels? Let's just think of your ultimate experience to get the most out of it what do you think is a, a good number of barrels that that you should be able to taste through for me personally i think six to ten once you get past ten you're starting to 
even if you're spitting, you're starting to feel it. You're kind of, mm-hmm. your sensories are kind of all like just effed up from the <laughs> being around everyone. And, it, and it, it, things just start kind of getting blurred towards then. And so I, I think six to 10, that's why, you know, I'm a huge fan of the, the four roses, you know, ones we do, they're always great. They, they're, they're fantastic. Cause you're in that six to 10 range always. But um, yeah, that for me, that's it. The magic spot. What about you, yeah. Fred? I think I think uh, I, I think Ryan's right. I'll, I'll lean toward the ten. Uh, you know, ten being the magic number. But I mean, I've done barrel picks with like uh, you know twenty and above. Like uh, I did some picks with Brad Williams of Liquor Barn, and, uh, and I when, was when they go, they they and that's weird because it's like some of these stores. You know, we've had talked to Chris from Kroger and like mm-hmm. Liquor Barn. When they go, they set up all their picks for one day for the entire year yep. and they'll roll out like 40 barrels and they'll take I was through. like I need a ride home <laughs> <laughs> and it's but it's it's amazing though like you know when when that happens my palate's still very good but m- my motor functions lack you know so you know uh, <laughs> you're crawling yeah I'm like I think it's time to go um but uh we had a you know when I did that I, I, honestly I think we tasted up to like 40 barrels uh Brad and I did that day and it was we were actually picking barrels for uh it was when I was writing for Whiskey magazine it was their icons of whiskey so we were picking barrels for icons of whiskey and we we tasted so many barrels but uh that was such a great experience and by the way like uh the best barrel that came from that uh, was a um, was a retail store called High Times. Like you, you know that store. I've heard of it. Yeah, that's what that in the magazine. That was the that was the best uh, that was the best barrel pick uh, that we had from that. They, they weren't there, and I'm like, I've been trying to find a High Times uh, from that since. It's the wi- uh, whiskey icons. If you if you find it, call me. But anyway, I don't even. What, what, what am I talking? About? I don't know. I don't know where we I, went. I don't we know. I'm talking going, about the magical I, number of barrels to taste. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ten. 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 There you go. <laughs> I I I would have thought like a, a real like. I think ten is a, a good number to shoot for. I think realistically, six is cool. Like yeah. six six gives yeah. a lot of variability. Three is just uh, like you're like okay, like that was. That was quick. Yeah, four is my like minimal that you would want to take. Like three is just not enough. <laughs> you know, it's maybe it also depends on the brand and the distillery because you know obviously Four Roses has ten recipes. Buffalo Trace has a kajillion brands. If if we want to talk about the biggest beef that I have, it's like I want uncut, unfiltered. You know that that sort of thing. But well, let's talk about that. I think that's a that's a, a good segue because when you are tasting it. You want to taste it in its final form. If you're anything like me, then you can't get enough about bourbon. And that's why I'm a subscriber to Bourbon Plus magazine. Bourbon Plus is a quarterly publication that tells the stories from the heart of bourbon. The farmers who grow the grain, the distillers who labor over the process, and the people like you and me who raise their glasses to celebrate it all. Subscribe to Bourbon Plus magazine today at bourbonplus.com, that's P-L-U-S dot com, and use code PURSUIT at checkout for $5 off your subscription. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point-of-sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify's point-of-sale is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. And with Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. And get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone. Transform your tablet into a point-of-sale system or use Shopify's point-of-sale Go Mobile device for a battle-tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash bourbon, all lowercase, and go to shopify.com slash bourbon to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash bourbon. (laughs) 
Well, let's talk about that. I think that's a that's a, a good segue because when you are tasting it, you want to taste it in its final form. You want to say like, okay, I know that this is what it's going to be. You don't want to get a barrel and be like, this was fantastic when we tried it. And then it gets to their final bottling proof and you're like, what the fuck happened to this thing? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of meh. And it's, it's hard. I mean, Buffalo Trace is great because they have, you know, the beakers measured out where they kind of have some form of calculation. Um, but it would be nice if they all, if you are going to proof it down, if you're not going to go through the trouble of bottling it barrel proof, give us a freaking hydrometer, you know, so we can get it to exact bottle proof. Yeah. You know, you do the instant reads and, and whatnot. Um, but I mean, but some of them do, I, I don't mind them at proof down because they're perfectly proofed, you know, like old force for to me, the barrel proofs are a little too hot. I think a hundred proofs perfect for the old foe line. I, but uh, some of them, I do enjoy proof down, but most of them I want them at barrel proof. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Knob Creek's one of those great examples. Uh, I, I think Knob Creek is so great. You know, remember when they had the 15 year old uh, 120 proofers out there? You don't really find them that often anymore, but man, that just was like magic. You know, we'd have, um, you know, Heaven Hill. Obviously, you cut it, but, you know, it's still really, you know, you t- you get an Elijah Craig barrel pick, and you're like, oh, my God, yeah, this is amazing. This is way different than than the regular Elijah Craig. So even when you prove it down, they're still pretty, they can still be pretty special. But I, I that's why I love, like, um, I love, like, what Wilderness Trail's doing. You know, Wilderness Trail, to me, I think they are doing such a great job with their barrel picks uh, because they, they, they get it to, like, how you want it. And you have a great experience there. And um, uh, I, I'm a big fan of the distilleries that go out of their way to please like what you want. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard because they have to change their systems. You know, they yeah, single barrels are a huge pain in the ass. Yeah, it's a completely <laughs> different line. There's so many different things there. And I get that. Got to keep track of that barrel out of all the thousands, you know, that have done Where is that it going to go in the country when it does need to ship? Yes. There's and I, and I get that. But I'm also of the mindset. If you're going to do it, do it right. That that's my that's my opinion about you know most things and and like the, I don't think there's anyone in the barrel picking game uh, that gets an F, but I think there's a lot of places for improvement. And I think the the one I will always stick to is why can't we have cast drink? Why can't it be uncut? And then they'll they'll say they'll they'll give a reason, and then my response is well then why do you have that in the barrel pick rotation? You know, if you can't, if you can't give a customer what they want, why have it? Yeah. I yeah. You, sh- you should definitely be able to do that. And that's what I think that's been one of my biggest gripes when we go and we talk about these distilleries that give you just a few barrels and they give you it at barrel proof, but they don't give you the hydrometer, but they give you a, an eyedropper with some water so you can proof it down. We're like, well, I'm not a fucking mad scientist. <laughs> like, I don't know when 134 proof is going to be down to whatever the bottling proof is going to be. Like Six or, drops. Yeah. Yeah. And- <laughs> And there's been times too when you, you are picking something that's going to be proofed down and they don't, they won't allow you to taste it at barrel proof, you know, and it's like, well, wait a minute, I, I want to try this at barrel proof just to, just yeah, to have I that think, unique experience. I think you know? Jack is like that. Jack already has it already like proofed down for you if you're getting one of those. Cause Jack Daniels, I think, um, same I, with Woodford Reserve. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and here's, here's the funny thing about Woodford Reserve is their, their process, you know, they have a, they have a blending process. Now, I mean, they they started that like five, six years ago and everybody, now everybody's doing it. And I remember going through that process and like with Chris Morris uh, at Woodford Reserve, I was like, this is really, really cool, but I don't know if it's going to work because people want to have their own barrel. But I like the, I love, I love the trend of blending. I really, really like that. Where, what do you, what do you all think about that? You know, we did our, our first Woodford barrel and we, we had the, the three samples, mm-hmm. three different blends. And the only thing that comes up to me in my mind is like, if we do another one, do I get the same three blends or is it going to be completely oh, different? Oh, see, when I did it, we could create our own blend. Oh, see, you no, know, they just sent you sample blends and like you just chose one or one, two or three. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was the difference. But then again, we also picked during COVID era. So that's true. That could might, have something It might have changed. It. Yeah. But I mean, I, I think blending's cool because it is, you know, After it is. After all, some, you're a master blender my, now, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. Uh. I don't know. I mean, but a single barrel is cool. They're, they're both, you know, great. You know, it's, it, I'm all for whatever is unique. You know, that's what you're trying to get out of the whole experience. And I had something really profound to say, but uh, it escaped me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but uh, anywho, yeah. Kenny, move on to conversation. <laughs> well, 
I think we could we could talk. Oh about... no, I know I had a question. Oh, so, okay, let's right. go. Bring so, it. So like, all right, it's it's game day, okay, and you're it's like you're you got it on your calendar barrel selection day. What kind of experience do you want? Do you want to just go taste the whiskey and do the barrel pick, or do you want a whole like half day, full day experience? Oh gosh, you know, now that we've been doing this forever and we love our community, we love everything about it. We still try to get the most experience for everybody that comes on a barrel selection with us because they are coming from out of town. They are taking time away from their family. They support us. And so I want to give them the experience that, that they want. And I think it's, it's very valuable. And I always tend to learn something at least every time that I do it. And don't be wrong. Um, you know, you go see a fermentation tank, you're like, oh, wow, it's not cool. But then you look at the mash, you're like, ah, it's cool. Right? Oh, yeah, you know, I mean, you, every, every time you see the bubbles. Every, every single like, time you see it, right? But if it was up to just me and you, we were picking barrels or all three of us, 15 minutes in and out. Like, we know exactly what yeah. we want. Yeah, I, I think it depends on, like, what is the goal with the barrel pick. I, I think, you know, when we're talking about Barrel Club, you know, you're wanting an experience for, for the listeners. And that's a very different goal than picking the best. And when when it comes to picking the best, I believe in removing yourself from any kind of uh, environment that will sway you. And so I actually don't like doing barrel picks in the distilleries. Uh, I like to have them send me the samples. I'll tell them what kind of like what I want or whatever, or if I'm doing it, like I want to avoid the tour. I want to avoid all that and just taste. And I'm like, don't talk to me. I just want to taste. If I have like a retail person that's with me, we might kind of go back and forth. Like I love tasting with Larry Rice from the Silver Dollar because he's the exact same way. He's like, don't talk to me. Not now, chief. I'm in the zone. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like, don't talk to me and we'll have a nod and that's it. And and so I if if I if I'm trying to entertain, which I have, it's a very different thing. It's a very different thing because, you know, we're asking questions, we're going back and forth. When if, it's, if, it, if the goal is for me to pick something that's the best for a retailer to sell or for a charity to, to push in an auction or for us to have a bourbon and beyond, um, I don't want any of that. I want all that. And I've, I've done it in front of cameras. I've done it. It's, it's very different every time. But I really don't like uh, having anything that can sway me. Makes sense. Makes sense. I'll throw one at you, Ryan. Oh boy. Glassware. So when uh, you're there and you know, the, we've had everything from Copitas to Glen Cairns to Rocks glasses <laughs> to solo cups. Solo cups <laughs> and little tiny, you know, mini plastic one ounce shots. So do you have a, a preference? Yeah, I mean, if you don't have Glen Cairns now, <laughs> it's it's you're you're uh, just a wannabe. <laughs> and the <laughs> it's we've showed up and there's little plastic cups and that's just unfortunate. You know, this is a, an experience. People are paying a lot for this barrel. They're usually they're big supporters of your brand and you mm -hmm. come in and you know, you're, you're going to have a little plastic cups. I think most of them have already transitioned to some Glen Cairns, but if you haven't already, please uh, do so. And it doesn't have to be Glen Cairn, but some type of glassware because I love, the, I love the mini Glens. I do love the mini Glens. They are good. Where do we get those? New Riff and uh, no, uh, Heaven Hill. Has Heaven them Hill, too. I think, yeah. does them too. Now. New Riff has them too as well. But um, Peerless has a little mini thing. It's not a Glen Cairn, but it's a. It's like a taster glass, what yeah. they call them. Yeah. It's also cool. Yeah. But um, you got to have glass. That's, you know, that's me. And you got to let people thieve out of the barrel. Like oh, there's God. some that, you know, are like, have it already poured out for you and everything. And and that's not cool. You got, if, if you're able to do it in a warehouse or wherever yeah. barrels are, um, sometimes you can't because of the weather, you gotta have, let people do that. It's, if they haven't done before, it's like I, every time I say it, people come up like, it's like getting baptized. You gotta leave out of a barrel. So that's what I was, I want to, I want to tell a story real quick right, because I've, hit me back on the glass thing. Yeah. We'll get tell to the story. glass thing. Cause that, you just remind me of something fun because well, actually it was maybe not fun. You know, Rest in peace, Al Young. Yeah. That man was the stingiest person with a thief oh, ever. He wouldn't let he anybody would, thief. He would never let you thief at Four Roses. And before, you know, before Al Young's 50th, he was never there as part of the bar private barrel program. And so you could go and you, Mandy would let you sit there and you'd thieve out. But as soon as Al was a part of it, nuh -uh, it's that's Al's thief. He wouldn't let you touch it. And so when and that's actually when people look at our past picks and they see Sweet Al and Spicy Al, 
it, not because of the whiskey. The whiskey wasn't sweet or spicy. It's because that was his attitude that day. Sometimes he'd be nice and sometimes he'd be oh, kind of mean to you. That was so fun to be around. But yeah, some days he'd be like, nope, this is my thief. You ain't touching it. <laughs> so, uh, Y'all have a very different Al Young experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So back to the glass. So I actually, I'm going to throw, might throw people for a loop here, but I like the industry glasses that uh, Seagram started using. I think it was in the, in the, in the sixties that have the, have the three little uh, lines there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so those lines are basically uh, to help you control the proof, you know? So we talked about some of the things with proof, if, you know, like you get a 135 proof barrel, you know, how do you know to get it down to something? Well, that's what those lines are there for. And so that's why I, I really like those. I don't think I've ever seen those. Well, I've seen them, but not at a barrel pick. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I, um, that MGP still follows all the Seagram's protocol. And they, uh, it was there that I saw that the, that the tasters were proofing it down to uh, 30 proof, uh, you know, for their tasting sessions. And I had never seen that before. And, and they were like, yeah, that's where we find find the flaws. And and I had this long conversation with Jim Rutledge afterwards, like, but you don't, you don't, you find the flaws, but you find the flavor. And there's like, and and I think that is one of the one of the really interesting, you know, differences between today's bourbon industry than like, you know, pre-bourbon boom is that the industry was so focused on consistency and finding flaws that they were not looking for flavor. So that that glass can help you find uh, can help you find flaws, but if you're looking for the flavor, you can still find you know the flavor. So that's why I like that glass for for this type of ritual. If we're talking about tasting at home, Glen Karen all day. Yeah. So it's funny you talk about proving it down. So one of the most more unique barrel picks I ever did was at Castle and Key with Pinhook, mm -hmm. and so their master taster blender. We had sixty barrel proof samples that he proofed down to 40 proof. I remember, and, I remember your Instagram post that day. <laughs> yeah. It was with breaking bourbon. They probably posted. I didn't. <laughs> Cause, uh, I, I typically don't post if I do a ghost. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So you're, you taste the raw 60 at 30 proof and you, you're looking for, it's amazing at 30 or 40 proof, how you can find so much nuance and flavors that you want or dislike at that lower proof. And then you come to find out that's how most, master tasters and quality control people taste this stuff you're like wait yeah. you don't taste it at barrel proof I'm like no no we you can't find the flaws because alcohol hides the flaws exactly you know so uh yeah that was we did it from like 60 then we willed it down to like 15 and then once we got to the finish we did them at uh barrel proof to pick it the final one but that was uh you know eye-opening experience for for me because i didn't realize they did prove it down to find out the flaws and whatnot yeah and in, in, in the thing about proofing it down to like uh, find the flaws, like a uh, some of the things that are flaws, people find flavorful, you know, and it, and so we, someone may get a uh, uh, kind of like an acetone kind of note, and they actually like it. It's it's people have different palates, you know. But the other thing about doing that is sweet oak. <clears throat> oh yes, <laughs> needs some of that sweet oak. <laughs> but are you actually? selecting a good barrel when you're going through and tasting it at 40 proof or are you are you doing his job for him right where you're trying to find the those flaws instead of saying like no i, I want it well he was we, getting, we were just we were just getting free consultation that day. or maybe that's what <laughs> yeah. maybe that's what it was i mean we're like these barrels no you know so you can move them in or out or the single barrel program <laughs> but uh no it goes into a blend i think more or less they were trying to give us uh because you know with us and bringing bourbon you know we picked a ton of barrels and i think you know, when you're picking a four-year MGP ride, it's like, how unique can you make it? You know, let's give it in, give them an insight to like how we do our processes of blending and stuff to whatnot. So yeah. that was, I think, more of the, the goal with that. But but it would be cool, you know, for someone to be able to do that because you do get to go through the same experience as a professional would. By the way, picking a barrel at Castle and Key is pretty cool. It, it is. That's a cool place They need to, to feed barrel. you, though. <laughs> I mean, the, they... So we did all this and it was like four hours, you know, of like going through and I'm like, man, it's like, we started at like nine and it's like one. So it's like, uh, we're going to eat or we're going to take a break. And they're like, nope, let's keep going, <laughs> you know, but it was, it was a great property is beautiful. You know, the whole experience was fantastic. You bring up a good point there because I, I remember you talking about that story and not being fed. Now, when we go and do some of these barrel picks, you know, we'll say Four Roses, for example, you know, they've got, they've got nachos there. They usually have like some oyster crackers. Like 
Snacks or no snacks? I know, Fred, you like to clean your palate with Munster cheese, right? Yeah. Do you, do you, do you yeah. pack a pack a pack a pack of Munster with you? Uh, I have before. I have. Um, no, I that's how you know you're a pro. Soda, <laughs> soda water. I think so, soda water for me is like the bare minimum. I request that. It didn't always happen. As long as there's water. There. Fred's showing up. We better have his soda water. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> only green m and <laughs> <laughs> But like, uh, you know, again, most of the things I'm doing now are are sent to me. I mean, if all of us. Uh, and it's more comfortable that way. But like if, if you're going there, you know. I mean, snacks or no snacks? What would you rather have? I would, honestly, I'd rather have no snacks. Yeah, than, than I'm, I'm, I'm no snacks, but I, I do like either being fed before. <laughs> yeah, or by after. the way, I shouldn't <laughs> call them snacks; they're palate cleansers. Okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, like, I'm like, well, about the snacks? No, they're they're supposed to be palate cleansers. Yeah, well, I, I don't need the palate. Water's fine with me. Well, what um, what cracks me up is that they all kind of like they they're all like beholden to their particular one. Like at Four Roses, at the at the top right hand corner with like a red triangle there's 99 cents on the on the bag of like nachos it's like oh wow you guys really care about us give us the 99 cent nachos <laughs> couldn't get the organic blue corn for us. <laughs> <laughs> went with the fair you know the concession stand nacho chip hey it works though people eat them yeah no. i i don't think you i i think that's kind of like it's if they're there my fat ass is probably going to eat them because <laughs> you know I'm a fatty. But you know that's I don't know if I don't know if they're that important. But then they're not there, and they're like, "Oh my god, I'm so hungry! I could go for a snack." And, you, know, you know, so I don't know. Nice to have the option. But I just want good whiskey. That's true. But I do enjoy as part of the experience as when you do get a lunch provided. I think it is for anybody that doesn't know, and they're like, "Well, how much could this really cost?" Like. On the very low end, these barrels are costing at the retailers six to eight thousand dollars. At yeah. the very high end, you're looking up to twelve to twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, and you know you don't want to fork over a hundred dollars for lunch for six people. Like, I think you could. I think that should be part of the experience. Yeah, I do too. I mean, I think yeah, because you can spend time with, and maybe they don't want to spend time with those. <laughs> maybe it's true. <laughs> Turn and burn, right? But you know, it's. I'd rather. I'd rather have lunch with. You know, whoever's leading us through the tour or the tasting or whatever, then do the tour 10 times. I don't know. It's just, I'd rather spend time with them in an intimate setting that's not like curated, just like hang out with them, you know, off, you know, not professional, well, professionally, but not, for, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it when they take us to restaurants after instead of like eating there or something. I like seeing like wherever, where they go, which in Bardstown, it's, Couple, it's getting better. A couple places. Mammy's but uh, some bourbon company. Or you gotta go to the, the other distillery. You gotta go to the competition. Yeah. <laughs> but like like Boone County, they they took uh my cigar club, they they took us to um, a, a really good like northern Kentucky Americana restaurant. This guy, I, I we we didn't know who didn't know anything about this place. It was like a biker bar. He had like M4s hanging up and uh and the food, like I had chili and it was like really good. And so I, I kind of like, I like getting outside of the distillery and seeing the culture of the area. And, and the same with like when I pick barrels out of, out of state, you know, it's, it's just cool to see, uh, where they hang their hat when they're not at the place. Yeah. Kenny and I just did that. We're in Woodenville and get, go to this, you know, we're in Quincy, Washington, where I'll probably never be yeah. again, but well, maybe next year, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. there's only like three places, but this diner we went to is like fantastic food, you know, just in this rural area. And it's, you know, and you're talking to the, you know, the master stiller owner and then the, you know, the barrel or the salesman. And, uh, it's different having lunch with someone than versus them being in, cause yeah. they're like in work mode. But once you go exactly. have lunch with them, they can let their hair down. They can talk and they can just be a person. And that's and what just, I like. And I'm just really passionate about supporting local restaurants. It's just like, it's always been a thing for me. And I just, I love, I love seeing where the distillers like to go to eat. Yep. It's weird, but I like it. No, it's very cool. I mean, I know Bardstown, yes, there is, there's limited selection, but I know that depending on the day, what was it? Patrick's or something like that. Is that what's on the main strip? Pat's Diner. Pat's Diner. Yeah, I mean, that place is great. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's that. And I remember we've been in there a few times and Every once in a while, you'll see a master distiller in there, or you'll see Fred. No, I mean you see you see anybody. Uh, it just depends. Like so, that's, yeah. There's not many cool great aspect. restaurants in Bardstown. So oh, don't it, don't tell yourself. Well, part. there's it's getting a lot better, and it's there's some great staples. But there's a good chance, yes, you will see somebody in the industry at those uh, uh, locations, just because 
there's uh, only a few. Well, <laughs> but like I said, and, and you all made a really good point. It's, it's cool to go out, see the local culture, especially when people that are part of our community come on a barrel selection. You know, it's cool to have sandwiches at the distillery, but it's also cooler to actually yeah. go somewhere else and, and have a, a, a moment that's with you all too. So. Yeah. Yeah, the way Buffalo Trace does their lunch, you know, they bring you into that nice room. I mean, they've kind of made, they've made a, I think of all the people who do lunch at their distillery, I think Buffalo Trace, Maker's Mark with their restaurant there. I think, oh, you know, yeah. people who yeah. have- Star Hill Provisions with Newman. That's I mean, when you, when, you, when you build the lunch into the programming, it works out great. But you definitely need to have a plan for food. If, if, you, if you're going on a barrel pick- you need to make sure the distilleries have a plan for food or you create one for yourself because that's a nightmare. Yeah. That's Kenny's nightmare. always good at doing that for us. We're always like, if there's no food, food provided, we're planning lunch yep. before it's necessary. This man can plan anything. You're, you're going yes. to need it. Well, guys, I think we hit a lot of good points today looking at barrel select, pro or barrel select programs, private select programs, and really what we prefer. And I think mm -hmm. we, we all kind of came to agreement that there are there's a good middle ground between going all out versus doing the bare minimum mm -hmm. and and finding that happy medium that you can really appease a lot of people and it's i don't think it'll be that drastic of a change to any yeah. any program to so be able listen to do up folks you do six barrels you provide lunch and uh <laughs> you let ryan go <laughs> truck to the warehouse and drill through barrels yeah yep. actually you don't even need to be there we're <laughs> yeah. gonna bring our own bottles yeah <laughs> that's right <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Make sure you follow us on all the socials and make sure you also follow Mr. Fred Minnick over here, The Fred Minnick Show. Well, with that, cheers, everybody, and we'll see you all next week. Toodles. Vodka sucks. Mm -hmm.